Uh, it's a great pleasure to introduce Lisa Robertson. Lisa Robertson writes poems, essays and novels where each of these forms leaks or even floods into the others. Recently she has published Anemone's A Simone Veil Project, an annotated translation of Veil's 1941 essay on medieval troubadour and Qatar culture. Boat, a continuing long poem begun in 2001, and the Baudelaire Fractal, a Bildungsroman. Uh, Lisa Robertson écrit des poèmes, des essais, des romans, et souvent ces différents genres s'imbriquent, se s'imbibent, se contaminent. Récemment, elle a publié Anemone, Anemone's a Simone Veil Project, donc une, une tra traduction annotée de Simone, d un, d un, d un essai de Simone Veil date, qui date de 1941, sur euh, un, un troubadour médiéval et la culture cathare, et Boat, qui est un long poème qu'elle poursuit depuis 2001, et ainsi qu'un Bildungsroman intitulé The Baudelaire Fractal. She was born in Toronto in 1961, began pu publishing in Vancouver in 1991, moved to France in 2004, and has lived for varying periods of time in Cambridge, Berkeley, London, Rotterdam, Princeton, and San Diego, in order to teach, research, and write. Three of her books have been translated into French, Le Temps, from Edition Nous. Donc en français, on peut lire Le Temps aux Editions Nous, Cinéma du Présent, au théâtre typographique, dans une traduction de Pascal Poyet, le temps, le temps étant, ayant été traduit par Eric Suchère, et tout récemment aux éditions Jocasseria, Debbie, une épopée, traduit par Sabrina Soyer et Claire Finch. Avec Sabrina, with, with Sabrina Soyer, she has been translating the poems of The Trobaritz Na Castellozza, and this work will be published under the title of Eye of Song by Nyan Editions in Berkeley. Avec Sabrina Soyer, elle traduit euh, la Trobaritz na Castellozza et le, 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 leur traduction en anglais de, la, de, de cette Trobaritz euh, sera publiée chez Nyan Editions. Euh, et j'ai oublié de, de traduire le, le début, donc pour vous dire que euh, Lisa Robertson est née à Toronto, a commencé à publier à Vancouver, vit en France depuis 2004 et a, et a, et a lu, fait de la recherche et enseigné et écrit dans beaucoup d'autres villes. Euh, je laisse la parole à Lisa, que je me réjouis de vous présenter. Moi, je ne veux pas m'asseoir. <rire> Merci, Abigail. Et euh, Olivier et Vincent. Uh, Abigail pour uh, l'introduction et la traduction que tu vas faire et uh, um, to Olivier and Vincent and Abigail for this incredible organization of this conference and these readings and bringing us all together um, for four days. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I uh, was trying to imagine what to read, and um, probably like um, most people here, I've been really depressed by the news. Um, the, the, the latest blow being um, um, the Supreme Court in the United States bringing down Roe v. Wade, um, which just, poof, it's hitting hard, isn't it? So I thought really the only way I could address this was kind of directly but indirectly. So I'm doing the all negation reading. <laughs> and um, it's going to start with a translation I did of a poem by William of Aquitaine, who's thought to have been the first troubadour which he wrote in um, the Occitan language in uh, the 12th century. Um, a really interesting thing about the Occitan language, when it differentiated from Latin, sort of 6th century, 7th century, 8th century, that sort of zone in there, that is when the word no originated in the Latin languages. There was no word for no or for yes in Latin. There were sort of phrases like, let it be so, or I will not have it said that. 
Um, but there was no sort of direct elocution that said no or we. Oui. And that a, was a sort of shocking uh, fact, bit of history, to try to wrap my head around. Um, I have to say, I, I don't read Latin or Occitan, but for many years I've pretended that I can. Um, but one of the characteristics of the troubadour poems of the um, 11th, 12th, 13th centuries was their incredible play with uh, yes and no in the poems. And there's a lot of equivocation around these words and a lot of joy even in negation. Um, the poet who Sabrina and I are translating, Nick Castellotza, there are only five of her poems left. I always forget, is it four or five? Anyways, almost every single line is a negation. Of course, they're all negating her messed up love affairs. But. So um, I'm going to read um, this poem that William of Aquitan wrote. Um, and I'll, I'll first blunder my way through um, the Occitan. <laughs> Forgive me. And then I'll read my translation of it. I listened to it on YouTube really a lot today <laughs> to, to prepare. <laughs> For I inverts de dreit nien. For I inverts de dreit nien. Non er de mi ni d'autrogen. Non er d'amour ni de joven. Ni de ren au. Canons for trobats on Durkman, Susan Chaval. <laughs> no sai on quel orami fuinats, no soy alegres ni irats, no soy estrens ni soy privats, ni no puisk au. Quen sai fui de nuets fadats, Sobron puigau. No sai coram fui endormits, ni coram mi vie somno modits, perpauc nomes lo cor perits, dundol corau, e nomo prets une fromits, per saint mersau. Malouts soy i cre mi morir, e re no sai mes quan naudir, mech kerai el mieu el beer, e nom sai tau, bas mech ir sim pot gerir, mes non si amau. Amigai io no sai quises, conc no la vi si maut fes, nim fes quem place ni quem pes, ni no mam cau, quanc non norman ni frances, dins mon ostau, auc non la vi et am la fort, Onc no aic dreit ni nomes fort, qua no la ve be men deport, no men prets in jau, quen sai gensor e bellatsor e que mais vau. No se lo luc ancesta, si es renpueg. Ho essen pla. Non aus dir lo tort que moi. Albens men cau. Et patsem biquar se rema per aiten vau. Fet ai lo verts no sai de qui. Et tremetrai loe celui. 
quello me tremetta per altri, en vez petau, que me tremetsis del sio estui, la contra clau. Rhyme for nothing. I'll turn a rhyme about sweet fuck all. None of me in it, nor you. Nothing loves, nothing's young, nothing at all. Nothing came to me while napping on my horse. <laughs> All the malady in my trembling, I read it on the ground. I know a shamanic doctor who doesn't. He'll do if he cures me. I'll die if he won't. I don't know my horoscope and I don't give a shit. I have no accent and no language. It's not my fault. Ghouls did this to me in the mountainous dark. I know nothing about the ground. Who breathes there in the fields? Shut up. The ground is only pain. It is my equal, not my shelter. I turn nothing in the dark, inarticulate wheel for strangers from Poitiers outwards. If ever you're untied, return my tongue. If no one tells me, I don't know if I'm asleep or not. I'm split right to my core. This heart leaks only grief. My Pray for me, saints also. <laughs> My lover is an unlearned word who disappeared like faith, weightless, no matter, no call, no other guest I'll shelter. Nothing's given or wronged, nothing's noble or gorgeous, nothing's worthy. If I see not, I'm worthless. Never have I seen what I must love. This concludes my version of Ferai Un verts de Dreit Nien, sung around 1086 by William the Ninth of Aquitaine, Count of Poitiers, lover of many women. <laughs> This is a totally different kind of text. Um, it's a short prose piece, and Abigail's going to um, read a translation she made of it, like, over the weekend. So um, much gratitude. Over the weekend, because I didn't send it until Friday night or something. Um, um, and it, it, it was 
It was written, I don't know, like eight years ago or something during uh, yet another depressing period. I can't even remember what was terrible then. Deaths, you know, riots, the usual. The melancholy. Everybody was feeling the melancholy. Each felt it in her own way. They used the word melancholy because of global post-history. The humor became a politics. The ones who claimed they weren't melancholic were in denial. Theirs was the deepest form. Some were just tired, a word they would repeat to themselves vaguely. There was dread. Some had been wrongly accused of certain acts, then cast out by those they had previously believed to be their friends, and some's erotic acts were money. Many's livelihoods were abolished by the state. This happened gradually or in a single blow. Some retired to isolation in rooms or in villages. They were in the distance. Some were tried for acts which previously had been lauded acts of freedom. Some tried for decades to survive their institutions. Some kept moving on like a meter. Some raped in groups. Some sought an institution to take them in. Some couldn't decide. Some wondered about affect. Affect, they called it. Some tried to love. Some seemed to prosper. Many's tumors were the political economy. Some compiled lists of their titles and accomplishments and wore these lists like luxury garments. Some wept at the cash machine. The queer ones all have a share of both. Some spoke of their immune systems as a landscape. Their health would be pastoral, dystopic. Um, excuse my petrochemical language here. Their health would be doused with isopropylamine salt of glycomate, glycophate, protheoconzole, iprodione. They would eat this and wonder about sadness. Some kept confusing reading with buying. They tried to prevent this. Some tried fleeing. Some just fucked. Some spoke of the melancholy as an autoimmune response to capital. The banal prostheses, the miniaturized devices, the immaterial products were now entering the interior of the body. The economy was cellular. Cells now limitlessly reproduced. The economy was not a metaphor, but an event in corporality. The melancholy was a cora running an unhindered course. It was the, the legitimate response to the illegitimate propagation of worldly lack. The lack would be overtaken, overcompensated by unceasing cellular perfusion. In this way, organisms would wear themselves out. Previous compilers of the Handbook of Melancholy have provided us with only an internal view. Within the current province of melancholy, everything else is merely an accessory. The melancholy is administrated. It is thorough. Une mélancolie. Tout le monde ressentait la mélancolie. Chacune la ressentait à sa manière. Elles employaient le mot mélancolie à cause de la post-histoire mondiale. L'humour était devenu une politique. Celles qui prétendaient ne pas être mélancoliques étaient dans le déni. Cette forme était la plus aiguë. Certaines étaient simplement fatiguées, mots qu'elles se répétaient confusément. Il y avait de l'effroi. Certaines avaient été accusées à tort de certains agissements, puis chassées par celles qu'elles avaient cru être leurs amies. Et les actes érotiques de certaines constituaient une monnaie d'échange. Les moyens de subsistance de beaucoup avaient été abolis par l'État. Cela s'était produit progressivement ou d'un seul coup. 
Certaines s'étaient retirées dans des champs ou dans des villages, elles étaient au loin. Certaines avaient été jugées pour des actes qui étaient auparavant, auparavant salués comme des gestes de libération. Certaines avaient essayé pendant des décennies de survivre à leurs institutions. Certaines continuaient à avancer comme un métronome, certaines violettes en groupe. Certaines cherchaient une institution qui les accueille. Certaines n'arrivaient pas à se décider. Certaines s'interrogeaient sur l'affect, elles appelaient ça l'affect. Certaines essayaient d'aimer. Certaines semblaient prospérer. La tumeur d'un grand nombre était l'économie politique. Certaines dressaient des listes de leurs titres et de leurs réalisations et arboraient ces listes comme des vêtements de luxe. Certaines pleuraient aux distributeurs de billets, les plus queer. Toutes possèdent une part des deux. Certaines parlaient de leur système immunitaire comme d'un paysage. Leur santé était pastorale, dystopique. Leur santé était arrosée de sel, d'isopropylamine, de glyphosate, de protioconazole, d'hyprodione. Elles ingurgitaient ça et s'interrogeaient sur la tristesse. Certaines confondaient lecture et shopping. Elles essayaient de s'en prémunir. Certaines essayaient de fuir. Certaines baisaient en continu. Certaines parlaient de la mélancolie comme d'une réponse auto-immune au capital. Les prothèses banales, les appareils miniaturisés, les produits immatériels entraient à l'intérieur du corps. L'économie était cellulaire. Les cellules se reproduisent désormais sans limite. L'économie n'était pas une métaphore, mais un événement dans la corporéité. La mélancolie était une chora qui suivait un cours sans entrave. C'était la réponse légitime à la propagation illégitime du manque dans le monde. Le manque serait dépassé, surcompensé, par une profusion cellulaire incessante. Ainsi, les organismes s'épuiseraient. Les précédents compilateurs du manuel de la mélancolie ne nous ont fourni qu'une vue interne. Dans la province actuelle de la mélancolie, tout ce qui n'est pas elle est accessoire. La mélancolie est administrée, elle est totale. Thank you very much, Abigail. C'est super. Surtout, c'est uh, chimique. <laughs> Comment est-ce que tu as appris dire ça <laughs> YouTube There are chemicals that are the same in French. Yeah, but I don't know how to say them in any language. You parse them? You did? Not as well as you did. Um, I'm going to read a, a sequence that's near the end of um, this new book called Boat, which folds within it an older book called Ars Boat, which folds within it an older book called Rousseau's Boat. So um, basically every 10 years I've returned to this. At least that's how it's happened. It wasn't the initial plan. Um, but it's interesting to stumble along, stumble across the idea that in retrospect I've written a long poem over 30 years, but I never really meant to. Um, the sequence I'm going to read is called Palinode. And so far as I can recall from ancient studies, <laughs> it's a genre or a, a bit more like a literary form of negation in which um, the writer can say um, everything that one is not permitted to say in the society uh, for fear of perhaps being um, incarcerated or worse, or at very least censored. Um, they say everything that can't be said in the form of a negation. Um, This sequence, um, like all the poems in this book, is constructed by going back over stacks and stacks, decades of my own old notebooks, which are um, pretty chaotic in terms of their content. But um, I did a, a reading of oh, about 20 years of notebooks, looking for all the negative um, <laughs> statements. And uh, then I, I, I worked with that material. 
Though my object is history, not neutrality, I am prepared to adhere to neither extreme. That which can no longer be assumed in consciousness becomes insolvent. Because it doesn't finish, I can be present. So I decide to speak of myself having witnessed sound go out. Fear is not harmful, but illuminates the mouth. I am not qualified to comment on the origins of the shapes. The archive pivots on a complicity neither denial nor analysis can efface. It is not true. It shines from your face. Against the hot sun that hits us, nothing's peace. There really are no gods and goddesses moving in the soul. What is lost is not necessarily personal love. And pairs that cannot absorb one another in meaning effects go backward and forward, and there is no place. It is not simply a case of the subject being dispersed in history. The smells, the sounds, the shapes are not meaning, but they are the city. This is the border. Nothing further must happen. The spurious clacking of grass is a dry spell in thought, but not abstract. Just as in dreams there is no limit to further overdetermination, I do not wish to enter into that discussion. Memory is not praise or doubt. It is not a substitution since there is no prior point. We were animals that wanted sun and luxury, and why not? Later, when I can no longer remain on the porch, I will be passing over the massy shapes of factories beside the Yellow River, the sheds on the roofs of the factories, the lean-tos flanking them, the loading bays and the stilted awnings all corrugated, warming to rust at the rivets. It is not my purpose to resolve incomprehensible secrets. This is a song of no knowledge, and this is not poetry. It is the king scented like my body. But to want everything is not normal, apparently. What we have not dreamed explains the visible. Let's not decide what danger is. Nothing else of the modest condition, not the damages and disgusts, and I feel no love among the civic troubles. The air is not quite deadened. I'm here in the not yet feminine. There is no limit to its capacity, nothing that it shall not create. I do not in any way wish to escape. I'll be their glamorous thing, then I won't. Nothing is more slippery or tenuous. It is not only about violence and use and their avoidance. Their communication is not only networks of dominance. Sometimes the meaning cannot be achieved by the body, not by an intellectual effort. So what if I am thick and stupid behind my life? It is not private. It never quite happens. Nothing was abstract, yet everything was absent. But this was not the city of melancholy, and today, I am not political. There is no sea and no forest and no boat passing. In a way, I am content to think about nothing. In simple despair, we accommodate what we cannot control. Nowhere shall I deliberately deviate. Nothing other than this dissimulation and disquiet, nothing grand nor classifiable, nothing secured. The crime is not incomprehension, but refusal. I have wanted a truth that is unavailable. I had undergone an influence of death which was itself imprinted on some moving sequin 
the breath sequence, heartbeat sequence, the organs and their slowing articulations sequence, which as they move from the foreground appear to dim since they go out to illuminate some event so distant we will never know the instant of its perception. As if poverty did not have an abiding insight into the nature of insurrection. Borders and organs end but don't change. Error is not harmful to art. It should by no means imitate either the willfulness or the wildness of nature, but should look like a thing, like free and unfree went walking to the unseen city of antiquity. Not to be ungrateful to the great middle dictions of concupiscence, but the women is itself not a content. It is not real, it is a communal perceiving rapture. If I am not required to be present, I can go further. It points to a means of perception I have not permitted myself. It is not so much a query as a form of belief. It is a structure in which truth is where the other is not. Someone has garlanded the lead Diana with camellias, though I find none blooming. I believe I am never free of the beautiful woods. At 1 p.m., we were confident. Now we are not. Nothing is enough. It is not quite midsummer. Technique is emotion. Later, it's nothing crumbled. Landscapes are not eras. They never finish. Because it doesn't finish, I can be present. Our health was not good. In a particular place, I could never use words. If I reason, I am not the state's body, nor is the body someone. It dreams no pronoun, no, not an elevation of any kind, nor any plan. Not even the happy closure, something like nothing happens anywhere. And some never love, hence they can never be omitted. In their clothing, they are not the kings I know. I realized I hadn't really begun. I seem to have no desires, or my desire is not very beautiful. Not even midst rills and fritillaria, not even my sevenfold will. Here are new enclosures without end. Perhaps this did not occur in a material sense. The beloved ego in the plummy light is not reasonable. Onwards, he coils without touch and escapes. I do not verify their progno prognostics. Nothing can be discovered but acts. What will we disappear into if not the moral filigree of praise? Finally, nothing but this omnidistant surface. The sense is not the fretful, self-important introspection. It was a process of assimilation, not of influence. Sudden rains never last long. They are never to lose one another again. It follows that these falsified arousals did not motivate memory, but there existed no other theory. How to be happy how not to die, to lie in bed and think. There is no other priority. Nor could I mint a newer silence. The silence cannot be done into English. There is no choice between historical and hidden meaning. Both are present. Presence is not enough. It won't assist my conduct. It was no longer the end of a season. I had no alternative but to become a person. 
I said to my king, don't die. It meant I had no space inside me. How did they become fearless? I am to ask a question where none exists. Such scenes admit no correction. Nothing stands between us. Now watered, now liking, now tending, now only literate. This morning is not everything. Now rare and obsolete, it quotes the dream. The garden is explicitly not walled. They are kings, or they are nothing at all. They spoke not of space, but of tables, beds, wells, facades. Utopia is negative, not punctual. I'm not done with myth yet, a form whose nowhere wrote. Physics is not so much the setting for the fate of the soul, it is the face of the soul. I report my loss to a slightly confused woman not used to the protocol, and I arrive at nothing but the rolling year. The sky hasn't yet reached its full color. I want to hold belief and dissonance in a cumulative structure that moves to no closure. This won't happen because of fear. These techniques are not an end in themselves, nor is continuity. The unseen city of antiquity becomes nothing less than a med meditation between psyche and history. Not a cloud is to be seen, nor an orchard, nor a single soul, nor a dog, nor a leather purse, nor subjection, nor trivialization, nor worthlessness, nor apples, nor stars, when the festival of war unfurls from garden suburbs and decks the patios in grand-colored swags flipping upward in the breeze bringing the shampoo scent of blossoms, it would be nice to interfere with the accuracy of the world. I don't want to correct features and dreams. The explanation is no more important than the rain. It marks the passing of a world I was not in. Sudden rains never last long. As for speech that does not have to be uttered, as for the sexual village and its motors, she smokes in her door. This becomes mourning. To hear you breathing as I write, thus the secular soul invents. The day won't be long, only forms are found. <laughs>